What's going on, guys? And welcome back. Today, we're going to be breaking down Snap's newest card, Cole Obsidian. We've got a great deck for you. We're going to talk about his synergy. And ultimately, is he worth buying or is he another just big statted card for your collection? It's a tale as old as time. Big doesn't always mean great. Doesn't always mean better. David versus Goliath. Pikachu versus Onyx. Ash kind of cheated, but that's besides the point. Now, who is Cole Obsidian, better known as the Black Dwarf? The largest and most powerful of Thanos' sinister alien alliance, the Black Order. He's actually the brother of Corvus, and he's the brother-in-law to his wife, which is obviously Proxima Midnight. He prefers oversized cosmic weapons like maces and axes to deliver blows powerful enough to crack asteroids in half. Basically, the guy's got, like, none of this represented in the MCU, right? Yeah, like, you got Corvus, who basically kills Vision. Screw that guy. Proxima's got some good epic moments. You got Ebony Maw going, like, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doctor Strange. He's taking on, like, multiple people. And then and then you got you got Cole Obsidian, who's just kind of, yeah, big. Now, in Marvel Snap, guys, he's a four-cost, 10-power card. That's obviously premium stats. And the only thing holding him back is you need a one-cost card on the same location that he's played on. You can do this within the same turn that you play him down, or if it's been down on another previous turn, that will also give you access to play the Black Door. Now, when it comes to evaluating his performance, I mean, you get pretty much what you see here. I mean, obviously you have things like location restricting, you know, Crimson Cosmos or like the Big House. Kind of makes it tough to play this guy a couple of times. But other than that, he was pretty easy to evaluate for the most part. Let's go ahead and hop into the star ratings. And we'll kick things off here with the competitive tier, and it's pretty tough to give him anything lower than a four star. Yes, it can be tough to play him sometimes and there's some location restriction, but most of the time he's going to deliver just raw, huge stats. Yeah, Shang-Chi can take him down, but that's Shang-Chi that they have to use. And then you have other cards that can benefit at higher cost. And ultimately he's going to add a lot of value to a good majority of the decks that he's in. Now, the fun factor, I hate to say it, he's about a half a star here, right? He's big power, which is great. But that's just about it. Nothing tricky up his sleeve and, and ultimately just a big power statted stick. But hey, winning is fun. And he's going to help you accomplish that. Next, we move on to the flexible segment. And I'm going to give him about a four-ish, 4.5. You know, this can be difficult because it can be tough to play if you don't draw a one-cost card. But there are plenty of decks most of the time when you get to turn four, even turn three with Zabu. You'll have a way to play him down. And, and that's ultimately why he's one of the most flexible cards within snap now he won't fit into every single deck but the majority of the time you can plug him in if you just want great stats alongside the other one cost in your deck just be sure you got a couple of one cost maybe three just to really ensure that you can place him down on any of the locations and then lastly we've got the adjustment category in which i'll give him like a three star i think ultimately they're not going to bring him down four nines kind of a buff from shang chi they're not going to put him up so this is probably where he lands for the most part I don't see them increasing his power unless they want to take him to five star and then they make it even tougher to play him. I'm not sure. But for now, this feels about right for Cole Obsidian. Pretty much, guys, in a nutshell, this card is just a lot of freaking power. And out of all the four tens, he's probably the easiest or up there to execute. And so for that reason, he's very tempting to get because you'll be able to play him a ton. But he's also skippable. He's a great, perfect card for definitely Thanos and a couple other cards we'll cover in a second. Uh, but also, he's just going to be a part of the metagame as a big statted card. 10 power is crazy. You can make new decks out of it. It really helps out some synergies. And altogether, he's he's a boring but good card. We have 200 plus cards in the game. Sometimes it's good to have a boring card, but he's great power. Uh, so I'll leave it up to you guys if you think you can benefit to have him in your collection. But there's a lot of good cards coming out. If you're a discard fan, do not get him because there's just you're going to need those spotlight keys for next week. But if you don't plan on playing discard, you should have some time to collect again uh, in time uh, for like Pixie and some of the other cards coming uh, in March. So overall, love them a ton. Let's go ahead and talk about the synergies. Now let's go ahead and talk about his synergy. Again, there's not crazy amounts there, but when it comes to his MVPs, of course, Zabu is at the top of the list. Being able to discount him to three is why it's so cracked and ridiculous. You can even play him alongside something like Shang-Chi on turn six. Thanos just gets rid of the problem of not being able to play him and is by far his best home when looking at the safest route. Obviously, we're going to have the best synergy there with the Mad Titan. Now, Squirrel Girl is interesting. She kind of represents all the one-cost cards, but I love her because you can play her down and then have maximum access to all the locations. Really just covers all the bases and it allows you to play him kind of wherever you want to. And then we've got Scar, who can be discounted by big power cards and being able to play this guy down on turn three really opens up Scar's overall viability and gives us more access to cheapening his cost. And then when it comes to the other synergies, guys, of course, we can just put any, you know, one cost card in here. But I do think Giddy Pride will probably be one of his other best synergized cards, allowing you to play him kind of wherever. 
armor. Very important to protect him from the Shang-Chi. So we have clear synergy there. Omega Red is a little bit easier to pop off with this guy because you can pretty much guarantee you win a location if you can pull it off correctly. And then, you know, I'll put Beast and Falcon in here. Maybe Kzar as well, just because you are bound to maybe play him as a stat stick in things like Dracula Dump Zoo or in just bounce decks in general. Let's go ahead and talk about where I thought he uh, made more of an impact. And these are my favorite lists from the testing that I got to do. Now, when it comes to the decks, you want to play Cole Obsidian in. There's a couple that are kind of creeping up towards the top. Obviously, there are fun ones like Zoo and, and Bounce. Those are obviously have some decent synergy to them. Uh, I also think just Werewolf by Night Dex is one that I didn't include today. I kind of stayed away from Annihilus as a whole because he's already a good card. Wanted to see what else Cole could bring to the table, but those archetypes work. Uh, but the other two that are clearly obvious is Thanos and then just big boy power decks with Zabu. And we start there with Power Party, one of my favorite decks that is actually pretty competitive right now. Was getting a lot of wins off it, probably because people had no idea what the hell is happening. We got all the big power four cost cards, and then we have a lot of synergy surrounding them. Right off the top, guys, we got Cosmo the Good Dog protecting Sentry from playing down Void, but also preventing Shang-Chi from our big statted cards. Definitely a lot of synergy, and you can even add more if you want to play cards like Maximus in the deck. In that exact same vein, we have Armor to protect our big statted cards as well, but at the same time, it also protects Atuma just to allow you to play him into any lane. Omega Red is easy to win a location with because you have so many big statted cards, but also it can help serve and aid the Atuma lane if you have to end up only playing him by himself. Zero in the deck, you could play on Sentry, you could play on Atuma. If you need to waste it, you could play it on Cole, or you could just play it on Martyr. Now, Martyr is probably the card that everyone's like, what the hell am I looking at? And you're pretty much right. It's another one drop that just works in the deck. But you can also play cards like Sunspot here, Echo, Titania. I mean, really any one cost card can play here, but this is the big power party and she has the power to enter admission. Clearly, we have Zapu in the deck because of all the four cost drops. And then we have Professor X and Scar as our only high cost cards. Professor X is awesome because we can play him on top of Martyr to protect us from her screwing up our game. But you can also play him on Atuma. You can play him on Cole as another Shang-Chi deterrent. And then you can just, of course, play him on Nebula. That's pretty safe play. He's definitely a very good card and synergizes well with the deck. And then last but not least, we do have Scar that can just go down to two costs, even zero costs if things go right. Playing Zabu on two, playing one of the big cards on three, then four, then five, allows you to play a free Scar, which is really cool. And then best of all, we have a lot of flux options here. You can go with Warpath if you want to go that route. You can do Luke Cage and Typhoid, and you have the zero to help out there as well to add another 10 power card if you don't have the other ones. Of course, you got Hood into a Nihilus. However, you do have Armor and Cosmo. That'd be somewhat anti-synergistic, so do be careful if you choose that route. You can go with She-Hulk. Hell, you can do Daredevil and She-Hulk because you have that love story thing going on right now, and that's also going to help you get even more power out there. This deck finally lets you play the big boys with not a lot of fear because we have so many cards protecting them from Cosmo to Armor to even Professor X. You know, Sentry felt a little weird at times. You can go Warpath if you want to, but I love playing him into Cosmo or towards the end of the game. Omega Red is also a flex card that you could just take out of here altogether. But I found myself consistently winning against Lockdown. You could go with Jeff if you want to go that route as well. But there's just a ton of flexibility here. So long as they all synergize with each other. I will say this. Probably stick to three one cost cards. You can get away with two, but sometimes you can get screwed. So three is the magic number. And then we go to the next deck in Thanos. You're going to see gameplay from both of them, but Thanos, I obviously had to include in today's deck. Now, guys, Black Order Thanos is insane. There's a lot of different Thanos lists you can play to good success, but this list right here felt really good to me. Super Giant can fit in here if you want to go even more towards the namesake, but for the most part, all these cards just synergize perfectly with what I was trying to do. Tyre to protect all your Infinity Stones. Black Swan, this is her best home by far. Shang-Chi for a little bit of tech insurance. And then you have all these giant six cost cards that are protected to get Scar's cost down. I would say the most flexible card, in my opinion, is Vision. Uh, Devil Dinosaur just feels too good with all the card draw, as well as getting an early Scar down as well. Jeff could also squeak out of the deck if you want to continue to go greedy on the big power. But this Black Order Thanos list served really good, and I won a good amount of consistent games with it. And that's pretty much it, guys. You do have a little bit of a vanilla card, but these decks are super fun. So we're going to jump into the games and showcase kind of how they work on the general ladder. Also, let me know down below. We've got these kind of imbalance patches with the love synergy. Do you guys want me to make temporary deck guides for that? 
they kind of died down because it's only going on for about a week but let me know in the comments down below all right guys we have lost diablos we have the martyr and nebula to kick us off let's get nebula out now we got the zabu on curve and uh, if we wanted to century so definitely like our opening plays even more curve and the cosmo all right let's get zabu down in the mid At this point, we're just going to snap, probably. This guy hasn't played a card yet. There's the Atuma if we want it. I think, guys, we're going to snap. Oh, snap. We're going to play Atuma. We can armor that location if we need to, or we pro exit on turn five. Those are the two options there. Um, it's tempting to play some of the other two, but we're already looking okay here. Fine with us. Omega red. Okay. Not terrible. We've got Cosmo ready to go. I think we Cosmo the left side to kind of ruin his day there. We'll go Martyr in the middle. Little risky playing Martyr. I'm not going to lie because she could fly into Atuma's lane and kill him. But that's the end of the game. We have a couple turns to make sense of it. Okay. We stop that. Stop that. Stop that. So we're feeling pretty good now. We do have our zero to play into Sentry now, so that feels good, but we can also just play Sentry here. Uh, and then we play Sentinel here, which I definitely like all these play lines together. Martyr is 100% going to jump into Atuma's lane and just kill Atuma, uh, but at least it adds five power over there. I don't even know if she's smart enough to read that. Maybe she is. Okay. And we got coal, which isn't exactly what we want, but it is because we can now coal mid where Martyr is. Even if Martyr goes over there and says, bye, it, we're fine, right? And then we play Omega Red left side. I think he's going to move the Lockjaw off had to take a stab. And uh, overall, feel pretty good about it. He could Shang-Chi middle. That would kind of ruin us. Uh, actually, that would be the main play that would just kill us. Uh, maybe he goes Blob too, but we also have the Omega Red. And now at this point, we're feeling good. There's really nothing he can do to win. Yeah, we're feeling pretty good here. Oh my God. I'll be damned. That blob get out, got up to 30, but we were able to get 13 Victory. with the Omega Red bonus, which is one of the synergies I love about the deck is that Atuma can hold his own lane and it can kind of go up to 13 if you play your cards right. All right, we have Power Party. We got zero Omega Red. Everyone's ready for the, uh, the party. We've got a little Wakanda Embassy. We're going to hang on to the zero for now because we have a lot of targets. Uh, that could take, obviously, that zero effect. And we have a white hot room in the middle. Exactly why we didn't play zero last turn. We got Zabu this turn. So let's go ahead and play him down now. As I've said, zero could go to Martyr. We could go zero Atuma, zero Sentry. A lot of targets to take the hit. We got an Angela in the middle. A little Nebula. And we got Cool Obsidian. So we have... I have a lot cooking here. I think smartest thing to do, let's go Omega Red. Next turn, we could go Nebula, Coal together, or whatever we want to do uh, with that. Maybe Zero and uh, Obsidian. We get the White Hot Room bonus. We feel really good about it, and uh, we, we present ourselves with a pretty good chance to win here. Okay, so my personal guess is that this guy's going to be able to fill as well. I think he's got Shang-Chi. We could feel uh, kind of certain about that. Um, let's go. I think we do. Uh, do we do the zero now or just nebs? I think we maybe just go nebula, right? Because then we can do zero in other ways and maybe even go like zero and, and, and martyr. Uh, yeah, this is definitely the way we go. We have pro X to really help us out as well. I think this is a no brainer. Okay, so we both fill out. So he's got a tiny advantage as far as. He can go in and out of that lane a ton of times. We have both eight energy, but I think maybe I think that his deck won't benefit as much. Definitely, this is the play line, and I think we go Martyr and Zero, and then we worry about winning left side in a second. So I think we go Zero into Martyr, exactly what we want to do, into Pro X. We have the mid doing okay. He, he'll probably win that. And then what do we go with? Uh, uh, Scar and Cosmo, yeah? We just don't know what he's going to play. I don't think he's going to play left lane all too much, but he's got the Elsa, so maybe he does. So this could also just be a play line. Let's go with that. We'll attack left side instead.
Okay. Really, like, anyone but armor here. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's a bummer. I mean... I, I don't know, guys. This may not be enough to win. We have one left for sure. This is, what, 14, 17? How big? I don't even know how big that Kitty Pride is, but the Elsa alone has me worried. He has to play something here. I feel decent about this. 17 is not that much, but I think he's going to be relying on a Shang-Chi in which we can protect ourselves. But he also has the Elsa bonus. And it's 20 because I can't count. So this is hit monkey, yeah. I mean, he torched us, but lucky for us, we had the Cosmo. <laughs> like that is where Cosmo's value just comes Victory. crazy. I mean, that guy would have won by a million if we didn't have Cosmo down for the priority. So uh, definitely a big eight cube win. Pretty nerve wracking. We did play it out pretty right. Mainly because Cosmo came up clutch there. We even didn't get the best top deck of all time. Uh, but that did allow us to play Cosmo and Scar together. So we'll take the big dubs on that one. All right, so we have Nebula, Zabu, Pro X. We like what we're cooking with. Let's go ahead and get uh, Nebula down now. Big House is a bit of a problem. We wanted to Pro X that, so rip that. But we can Zabu left side now. And then that's going to allow us to play Omega Red in the middle. And then we can Pro X with like a little bit more safety here. But let's see where that goes. Right side, that's fine. Let's see the location reveal. Time Theater, double Omega Reds. That's hot. We like that. All right, let's go Omega Left. We're going to snap too because at this point he only has Sunspot down. We've got Red, Neb, and Zabu. That Nebula reminds me of like, I don't know, Invader Zim. Does anyone remember that show? Yo, that's insane. He got the energy from the time theater. What? I don't think I've seen that interaction. That's just crack. All right, so we're going to go red again. Martyr in the middle. And then we pro X left side, right? That's fine. I mean, kind of. Uh, we got a Tuma. What would he play here? I mean, this is kind of the all-in play, right? Like, we just play this, and if, uh, if he doesn't play it, we win. If he does play it, we probably lose. It's going to be close. Let's see what he plays, though. I feel like... Oh, let's go, guys. We lock that down. He leeches us, which is fantastic. Chicken Nug, appreciate it. And now we got the Atuma that we could play, uh, or just the Scar. So we'll go... Um, I suppose we just go with the with the power over here. I mean, we have so much power cooked into this. He's out of here. That was a cool win, man. That was definitely an interesting one. The sunspot to interaction Victory. is something I haven't seen before. All right, we got Bruin and we got Sakaar, which is crazy. Let's get Nebula down now. We're going to snap potentially. I almost want to snap into this. I know it's aggressive snapping, but what do I not like being played here? I guess Zabu. But if we have Pro X to just land on Nebula, that is a good shot to win. Cool Obsidian, just as good. Very aggressive snap to get things going, guys. And it is a good chance this guy just has a stone come down. We got Pro X, the perfect snap. There's the Soul Stone, but no worries. We have uh, Nebula to cook us up here. So not a bad start. Cozy, why don't you play the new cards? Cozy, you're showing matches without the new cards. That is why, guys. That, that is why. Well, um, okay. Goodbye, Cole Obsidian. Let's play Zabu now for all the one cost, or er, four cost we have. G thanks, uh, Bruin. Right in time. Uh, don't mind this, because the Zabu can protect, or get us into the big house. Uh, mm, kind of interesting. I guess we armor, like, uh, it's fine. That way we can play a Tuma there. I mean, we have a lot of big cards. It's like, Mortar and Cosmo are the only ones we don't have. 
Um, this is cool, man. But then it puts both of them in there. No need to do that. Let's just get the Atuma in now. I mean, this should just be a dub, yeah? It's just tough because he could blob it out. Do we just skip this turn? There's not a whole lot of reason to play this turn out. We'll skip it. So he's just going to play Blob on Sinister, yeah? Like, that's the only thing that's going to happen. Okay, we have our Scar. Is this enough, guys? Is this enough? I mean, we're putting 16 here. The Scar goes there. There's definitely a shot that this Blob goes up to just 1 billion power and we lose. But let's see if we can put up enough mustard. That's 24... 29 so long as this thing isn't transcendent and is below i think 50 or 20 is an average right there we go we tie there we win by the nine though oh my god blob is the scariest card in marvel snap but we got the dubs victory it was the big boy this would be the ultimate ufc fight you got some scars a tuma look at that all the pecs here i guess these are pecs okay cam boy uh we have zero into martyr we like that we have zabu I love just the eight power play there. We got a zoo cold deck, no doubt about it. And I love it. Elysium is insane for kind of both of us. Let's get Zabu down now. We can put Nebula left side. This is going to just be a insane game. All right, here goes Fanta. We are going to play red wherever we... Oh, God, I hate Sokovia. There goes Kazar on his side. That's massive. We're going to snap. snap. Martyr it doesn't matter as much anymore because we could just pro exit. Um, which we might just do next turn. Like, I think we just double up these, these ones. Maybe we didn't have to play Martyr yet, but that's fine. We play both these now, then play X. Okay. We got the big boy. Let's get X down now. And then we just play our... I mean, as long as we... If we can top deck, you know, a Tuma Sentry, we will not be able to play cooldown because of the cards. You know, we lost zero. Avengers. Assemble. That's okay, though. I guess he could have Shang-Chi. Uh, Tuma. I feel like this gives us, like, different play lines. So I guess a Tuma. I don't love him here, but obviously it gets our Scar down. We don't hate that. Behold my mighty hand. And then we have Sentry and the Scar. What to do? I mean, this is so much power. I think we just say screw the right side. We actually kind of hope he plays that. He's going to blue Marvel, which will add four to the left, but he didn't play. So that's Nebula. It adds a good chunk to the middle, but it doesn't add 20 freaking one. It adds a lot. This is just Blue Marvel mid. No question. We got that. We got it, guys. Feels good. Feels good. That was a tough one to math out. This, dude, that was the first, first deck I ever played in Marvel Victory. Snap. Shout out in the comment sections if you played Strong Guys at the zoo. I love it. It's missing Strong Guy, though. Let's go in and get the Soul Stone down right now. Uh, the hub could, uh, Miles could be interesting if we do get, uh, space stone, but we also have Jeff. So kind of a good card, uh, you know, for random sake. A little murder world action. Interesting. We got, uh, black swan now, and then, uh, that's going to let us get the power stone down and coal on the same turn, which is awesome. interesting he goes with the ebony maw left side what the heck is happening okay so we've got uh cole now we play cole just in the here which you know we can protect him not not half bad um or we just really contest the lane that he wants to win the most being the middle with him having ebony maw there it just doesn't have me scared so let's go with the power stone right into cole uh we could also go lockjaw now not the worst time to go lockjaw so we could th think on that for a moment we go Lockjaw now. We could play. This is kind of interesting. Let's move Jeff. Activate Miles. 
get the power stone in there for free cycle that out and then play coal it, it's kind of risky guys definitely but i think we're gonna get some value here from it wow well we got the power stone down for our coal play that's what's important this is the the toxic mobster uh let's get cold down then dead here in the middle we'll get miles to the left kind of set us up for success there and then then we've got thanos and blob that we can play uh right or mid whatever we want to kind of do there okay so we have the priority blob is going to be an instant win he cannot play left he could play like shung in the middle very well definitely could play shung in the middle he can't play left side we're gonna go i think he thinks i'm gonna play like really hard here obviously where do we lose this game guys if he did decide to play shang chi middle my best guess though if we just look at everything i think he is just going to be moving a card here hoping for the power stat and maybe going hard here uh, it's kind of a foolish game for him to stay into on most parts because he doesn't play shung in the middle there maybe you think we couldn't go for the top he could play dr doom here but we still would tie it a little bit and instead he pulls everything else that was the most insane finish oh my gosh so he pulls Victory. everything else blob stays with the giant stat stick we kind of got screwed with magneto not getting absorbed there and then you've got the uh you've got the soul stone putting a little bit of negative power getting us over the top massive win that is uh kind of crazy even with the lock jaw negasonic play and then oh yeah thank you magneto for pulling the big guy all right guys we've got space stone jeff magneto let's go ahead and get things popping with the space stone up first mind stone uh we don't mind on turn two and then we got the old coal so we're gonna go mind stone mid we're gonna get both draw from that but also just be able to play coal to win asgard or haul up if he commits to haul up we can just win that with coal Okay, so Gamora. Dude, I love how many people are playing these love decks. It's amazing. Uh, all right, so we have Sacred Timeline, Reality Time, and Jeff. So we're going to go Jeff over here. Um, do we need to fill this? I don't think so. What do we need? We don't really need the draw. Like, do we? Eh, we can take it. We got the time. So that let's go ahead and play the time now. And then what we could do is we could play Cole on top of one of these. Gosh assemble and then just change the other like right now i think we just play coal dead mid because you know at this point he's got to commit guys so let's go coal here and then we can play anything else we want to which i think will be reality left side just to ensure we don't we don't lose that home front and then we also get uh so we get like endless draw we're preventing him from the draw so we're going to cap ourselves but i think ultimately that's fine or we go devil dino i like both of those i kind of like the idea of just the good old devil dino right now. Snap. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Oh my god, the respect is there, my man. The respect is there. He is playing the full-on love deck. Uh, we draw the vision. We prevent him, uh, which is what is important here, from getting the draw. Now we can play coal and a stone. We can play vision by himself now. Kind of a couple of options here. I think it's interesting if we put up a good power fight against what he probably thinks is a surefire deck to win. Uh, let's go, though, with the Soul Stone. I believe. Vision, though, dude, is also just insanely good here. I think we go Viz. Because then we've got a lot of flexibility, too. Like, one end, we could have just played coal in the stone, but now we could play vision, and then we could either play coal in two stones or the blob, but we get the option to move the vision. Like, you know he thinks he's winning this right lane. So that makes 11. 14, 24. And then we go soul stone mid. Probably reality to draw. I think I just compete with his best lane. He could just go Shang-Chi here, though. And if he does that, then that's fine, too. 
But we get a draw a little bit more without Blob here. Okay, so he goes left side. The heck? So he abandoned mid. He just tried to win left because he thought he won right side, I think. Which is exactly kind of what we aim to do there. And he has the agent. All right, there you go. Captain gets a little love too. Not a bad finishing play. Kind of cool there. And uh, let me know down below, guys, if you want a Victory. love deck. Uh, we only have so many days of that thing going on, but I think it would be fun content to do like a power of love deck, right? Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and the overall evaluation on Cole Obsidian. Guys, it's one click for you to subscribe and it helps me out massively if you want to take a second to do that. Uh, good luck out there with the new card. And as always, happy snapping.